Wow, hi everybody. So this is Hoplomachus Victorum, the tabletop simulator version. Now Hoplomachus Victorum, as we know, is a purely solo game brought to us by Chip Theory Games. It's a next kind of <clears throat> evolvement of, uh, of the mass massively popular and fantastic Hoplomachus series. So what is Hoplomachus Victorum? You are going to play one of seven heroes over the course of a campaign. And the campaign is going to be, if I pull this up here, you can see it's four acts with up to 12 weeks in four acts. So you're going to play as one of the heroes moving around this world map down the bottom, basically trying to defeat three of the other heroes that you haven't chose to fight against. Uh, so fight us, should I say, uh, to kind of build you up and beef you up until you get into a place where you feel confident, where you can take on one of the scions. And there's two here. We have the Hydra and we have the Tyote. Um, but yeah, so... Who am I in this game? Well, I have chosen to play uh, Virago. And here we go. Here you can see she's a fearsome Amazonian warrior. Fantastic. Okay, so when you choose your hero, you start on their particular homeworld map. And this is the Amazon's map here. I'm just pull up exactly what's on there. So you can see here that there are four, uh, four center hexes, which are the champion's dais. They will come into play if you're playing the King of the Hill. Uh, one of the King of the Hill matches on there. We're probably not in this first game. Uh, arena chips cannot move onto or through monoliths, and each monolith will move at the end of my turn. Now, these are monoliths here, and what these are going to do at the end of my turn is they're all going to move one square, uh, one hex in the direction that they're pointing. When they reach this particular point, they're going to turn around and go way back, and they push people away from, uh, from those hexes, so they push me and the other fighters away from it. So I know that Virago, when I chose her, she's an, uh, she's an Amazonian, uh, and her particular skill, if I flip the chip over to this side, you can see her particular skill on the right-hand side is, as bow and arrow, it says Archer on that. Uh, we don't use that side when we're fighting as that hero, though, because that is the side we'll be using when we're fighting against, and we're just going to use this side of the chip here. And if I go up to this sheet, you can see here's Virago's stats, and each... each um, each hero has its own starting stats, so you can see Virago. She's got a movement of one, that's the green uh, chevron. Her range is two, and she's got five health. Um, she can command five armies, so if you look under the abilities side there, where it says quick, quick strike and heave, we'll talk about them in a second, then there are five crosses underneath that. That means she can command five soldiers, so she can have a total of five other uh, here, basically, five other units here. She's only got, she starts with three in this particular uh, this particular thing. Her abilities are Quick Strike and Heave, and I'll explain what they are. And she starts with one green dice. As you can see, you can get a number of dice here, and uh, <clears throat> uh, up to a maximum of four, and you will start with a yellow, and then you upgrade those. <coughs> so, uh, Virago starts with just one green dice, but we'll get the ability to kind of get more dice as we play the game. So, say, go down to this chip here. She starts with this five health. Now, ordinarily, of course, you would put chips underneath them, um, but just for ease and showing people kind of what's on the, as I'm playing this on TTS, I tend to use a red die just to denote health. So we have five on Virago there, and then these are her three starting units that she starts with. Oh, that's her green die as well there. We have an attacker there, and they have a health of three. We have a defender. They have a health of five, and we have a tactician who has... Excuse me, a health of one. Also, um, uh, Virago starts with a, a particular tactic, and this tactic is predefined. So she's got, as her skill is Archer, as we can see up there, she's got a Bolster Health Tactic Chip, which adds two HP to a unit's current HP, and that's instant if she decides to use it. How do I know that then? What, uh, what, what has caused that? Well, because over here, if we look at this particular thing here, down on the uh, the middle at the left there, it says AI Tactics Assignments. And you can see it says Archer has a bolster health. So that's not, not only for the AI, but that is what, um, that's what Virago starts with as an Archer as well. There. You can see, depending on which you, you choose, they will either be an Archer, an Attacker, a Defender, or a Tactician. And they will start with a particular tactic. What else is on this map? So I say, we got her three starting um, warriors here from the neutral players. And here we are, there are the remaining neutral players there. So we have uh, these remaining neutral players, and they're eventually going to go into this bag, and we'll pull them out to fight against them. If we look down here, you can see that I have put the uh, starting bead on um, Virago's home arena, and that is there. You can see a number of home arenas around here. 
And if you look closer at this map, you can see some shares, some little dotted white lines. And this is because each uh, after each fight, um, before well, when you, on each turn, I'm going to move to one of these icons basically, and I'm going to travel around the map trying to find uh, trying to fight the other three heroes that I will have to fight as the Primuses, and I'll pull those out of the bag in a bit, uh, and bulking up my character and beefing up her skills and her army in the interim. And eventually, I will get to a place where I'm good to fight one of these characters, and I'll move into their arena. You can only move into an arena to fight a character. And you always start on your home arena. So there we go. Virago has started on her home arena just there. Now, say, the aim of the game over four acts is to fight three uh, Primuses, that's three other heroes, and eventually a Scion. And here we go, I'll show you one of the Scions here. So we have the Hy uh, Hydra and we have the Toyote. Now, if you played kind of uh, some of the Hoblomachus, uh, I'm thinking more along the lines of Rise of Rome, I want to say, which is um, where you're going to play against the... Um, uh, the uh, what they call the titans etc then you'll know roughly how this works they start with a number of dice look at that they will roll two black two green four blue two yellow and a red every time and if they uh, get hits on any of those then they will you know you will follow that down there so you need to be really beefed up because not only are they going to kind of roll all these dice and do all this at the uh, on their turn if you look down at the bottom left they're going to start with and where it says H, I think it should be a P there. Uh, oh, no, that's my starting thing there, sorry. Where it says H, I will start with a hero and also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of my units if I got my units to start there. Of course, the Primus will, uh, the uh, Scion will start ever so differently because if we go over here, it will tell us that, uh, and we go to this, down at the bottom, um, there's a particular sign reference sheet, but each event will have, um, as you can see on here, everybody, every in every act, they're going to start with various things. So a Primus will have a local, a local, a local, a Primus, and uh, that Primus will have a tactic on there. It sounds complicated if you look down at Act 2, Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, but trust me, it's not. When you get into the flow of it, you'll see how these things build up and how they build up their warriors as we go along. So, I've got to choose a particular Scion to fight. Uh, and I'm trying to work out which side I want to fight. Do I want Toyote or do I want Hydra? Let's let's hmm, let's do Toyote. So what we do is we're going to take their Bane chip and we're going to put it into the Bane stack here. And I'll explain what Banes are in a wee while. Okay, so that's I know ultimately at the end of Act Four I'm going to now fight Toyote. But what I've also got to do is pull out my other three heroes that I need to fight that are going to be Primuses. So I've got my enemy empty draw back here or shuffle back there. All of the remaining heroes I can put in there. So let's do that. And these are going to be a what will be a Primus. And I will fight a Primus at the end of each uh, each act of the first three acts. So we shuffle those. And we're going to pull out the first one. And who's it going to be? It is. Ah, right, okay. So this is Stigiana. Um, okay, so I believe Stigiana goes, I want to say, uh, down here, or maybe in Atlantean, I'll go and find that in a second. Okay, so Stigiana is going to go there. Then who do we have? We have uh, Kraken Lance. So I believe he's a new Argonaut. I'll double check all these in a second. And then finally, we have... Um, uh, the Sea Strider, who I know is a Limosian. So we put those in the relevant areas, and the aim of um, the aim of um, Virago is to now move her chip round this board, basically go by go, trying to get to each of these and then fight them. So that's how you set them up. And I'll double check these in a second if they're not correct. I know the Limosian the Sea Strider is correct, but I'll double check these two guys in a second. Um, uh, and when we come back, I will show you exactly where they go. So that's it. The rest of these can actually come out of here now, so we'll put, um, there we go, the Parthian goes there, the uh, Kun uh, Bingjing goes there, and also then we have Decimus goes there. So in this bag now, I'm going to add the remaining neutral players, basically. And that's that, we'll give that a good shake. And we are now more or less set up. So at the top here, we have chips for each of the various factions that are on the board. So we have the Limosians, we have the Atlanteans, we have Pluto's Refugees, we have the New Organ Argonauts, we have the Suvius, we have the Amazons, and we uh, have the Kunlun, and also the Parthians as well. Uh, so you're going to put those into the bag in whichever arena you fight them. Okay. 
So, we are all kind of more or less set up. We know what our starting uh, armies are. We know that we've, uh, we're going to fight these three characters here. And I'm going to start down here and make my first move. Uh, and then that whichever, whichever kind of area I move into will tell you what kind of um, event happens. Actually, probably a really good point to tell you about the events. So, as you can see, there are down here, three different types of icons. There's a lethal, a sport, and an opportunity. And what happens on these is these are dictated by these cards up above here. So as you can see, we have a sport, we have an opportunity, and we have a lethal just up there. So depending on what action you do, you go there. Now, if I go to a sport one, I will choose one. Of, I will choose the top card here, and here we can see it's the pummeling. And if I just pull this up, uh, and this has got three icons at the top. Okay, it's got a flag, so it can be a capture the flag fight it's got a mountain so it can be a king of the hill fight or it's got a fist which means it's a spa fight and if you look down there it says i can only use defenders in this event and i do not have to use my hero and uh the top icon where the uh, where the crown and the skull is that's the enemy go there and what they can do is they're going to pull one local out that's got a tactic and also one um they're going to pull one local and then one uh neutral into into the battle there basically and that's the order they will come out i underneath can use my hero and up to three of my units but remember i can only use defenders now sport events are different to a lethal event which we'll talk about if your units are defeated in a sport event, they don't die. They just get taken off the board and then they come back to full health. If your units are defeated in a lethal event, then they do die. And they move into the kind of uh, into the draw bag uh, to become new units uh, to be pulled out in the next in the next kind of phase. However, however, um, what uh, what kind of also happens is that uh, your hero can die in any of these events, basically. And if your hero dies in either a sport or a lethal event, then that is it. That is game over. So that's the sport events. Uh, then we have the lethal event. And uh, if you look at the lethal event, it's Voracious Cyclops. Enemies deploy with five hit points. And when an enemy unit uh, deal damage, they gain that much hit points. So if they were to damage me with hit one, they would get one back. Just going to pull one local, uh, and they're going to have a tactic, and I can have my hero and up to three units if I go to a lethal one. And over here is an, uh, an opportunity. And so if I go to one of the spaces that says opportunity, I can pick this card, hold it back, uh, and therefore I can also then pull this out at any point. So I can, if I deal, if I've got this card and I deal for damage with a single attack, I get to choose a hero prowess cards. Now, what are prowess cards? Ha! <laughs> down here our prowess cards we have the hero prowess cards and the kind of standard prowess cards so i could set through these let's have a look at this one for example um sorry this one here so if i choose a hero prowess card and i choose this that's a level three so let's just pull over a level one level two and level one you can choose any of these so if i choose this card as my prowess card um I could, uh, um, once I got this prize card, on any turn, I could deal one damage to Viralgo, but add a yellow dice to her attack on that turn. So you get to kind of beef up your character as the game goes along by potentially having prowess cards. So, uh, I think that's more or less kind of an ideal overview on there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and check, make sure I've got the right place for us. Well, I'm going to see Strider is Stygiana and Kraken Lance, and then we'll come back and we'll play through a couple of rounds of Hoplomachus Victorum, and how good does this look? Okay, everybody, we're back, and yes, I, as I thought, I've got the... Uh, uh, the sea stride in the correct place, but I've got these in the wrong place. So Stygiana is part of Pluto's refugees, and therefore she's going to go on her home arena there. And Krakenlance is part of the, Atlant uh, the Atlanteans, and he's going to go there. So as you can see, I've got a fair way to travel. I've got to get from there to there within 12 weeks, or there, uh, or any one of these three, within 12 weeks to fight them. There are ways to do it. First, I want to try and beef up my characters, of course, but I could also use these uh, ship uh, uh, travel as well. And basically, that means I can move on to one of those and then come back off one of those. That would take a week, but at least I'm moving along there. So there are ways to go through it. Um, I can't go in any of these other home arenas at all because I'm not fighting any of their heroes. And I can only enter these home arenas, so the ones under here, 
as and when I'm ready to fight those particular heroes. So let's kind of start off on our journey, shall we, basically. So as you can see from where I am, uh, I can go two places. I could go to this lethal uh, contest here, or I could go to a sport contest just up here. So I kind of want to get this way. Um, and the rewards are different for both lethal, lethal and sport, and I'll show you what they are in a second. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to move to a sport one, which is just up here. So I take this top sport card, and I get to choose which game I want, which game I could choose a capture the flag, I could choose a king of the hill, or I could choose a spa. Now, for capture the flag, what I would have to do is start down here, and I would have to get this uh, hex up here, basically, get the flag chip, and then make it all the way back to my area to capture the flag and win the game. For King of the Hill, I have to get up to one of these hexes, and every time I get up to one of these hexes, I get a point, and it's the first up to six points for King of the Hill. And for Spar, it's just about defeating the other um, the other units, basically. So, yeah, uh, Spar is just a straightforward battle. Um, yeah, so as it's sport, as I say, my hero can die, but my, bad, my, my armies can, uh, obviously cannot die, and we know that in this one, as it says, uh, we says here um, that we can. Only use defenders in this event, and I do not have to use my hero. I'm going to fight a local. We've got a tactic and also a um, uh, a random uh, army uh, out of the neutral back here. So let's let's do a spar. I think I want to do a spar. I want to have a fight. I want to show you a fight. So first thing we're going to do is choose the right one. Now we're in uh, Atlantis, so it's one of these green ones. Sorry, Amazons. We're one of these green ones here, and we're going to put this guy here, and he's the Warster. And he's a tactician, as you can see from um, the um, the icon on the right of the by, uh, right hand side where it says Warsia. He's got a health of two, so let me just get his two from there. Get his die, put that on there, and make that a two. Okay, so he's going he's going to roll a red die each and every time. He's also got quick strike. I got quick strike. What is quick strike? Well, we go down to the list here. It says a quick strike is when targeted with a basic attack. Deal one, uh, deal, e deal the attacking unit one damage before the attack. So, wow, okay, so yeah, targeted with a basic attack, then quite frankly, he's gonna always kind of do some injury there. So, we've got to be careful how we do that. Also, he's gonna draw a tactic as well because it says here he's gonna come out with a tactic. So, we know that what is the tactician starting tactic there? So, he is a tactician. If we look at this again, it says a tactician is going to get hamstring. Okay, so we'll pull, have a look at this, search, and we get a hamstring tactic, and he's going to start with that. And we go, or he or she, they are going to start with that. Okay, uh, and what you do is you pull these out in order as well. So finally, is we're going to pull one bad guy out of here as well. So there we go, and that is a, what we got, we got an archer. Mm, he's got a range of two, obviously. Uh, he's going to roll a black and a yellow die, um, and yeah, he's got a health of two as well. So we'll get a red die for them. Move that over there and put that on two, and therefore they've got a health of two. Now, for me, uh, it says I can only use defenders on this map. I've only got one defender, so of course I'm going to be using the defender on this map, uh, and I am going to have to use my hero Virago as well, basically. So what's going to happen is there are a number of phases, uh, uh, stages when you go into fight, and let's just pull this over here. So the AI will deploy, and then it will deploy a tactic if it can. Then it will move, and then it will do its abilities and attack or special attack, basically. And as you can see here underneath, it says sporting event. If I win the sporting event, I can choose any of the bad guys from their lineup, or it's anybody I've fought, or a tactic from the supply. Then discard the, the event, or if I surrender, and you can surrender, uh, you cycle the event, so you put it to the bottom, and I add one Scion Influence. Let's talk about Scion Influence to start off with here. So if you look at the bottom of this here, you can see the Scion Influence. Now, I will start adding to that Scion Influence if I lose battles, and also if I spectate, because you don't have to fight, you can spectate, but you'll move up one on this Scion Influence. And every time you do move up on that Scion Influence, and you hit one of those little uh, icons that look like a skull, you're going to pull a Bane chip out of here, and Banes aren't particularly good. They will go into the bag, uh, and they will not help you. And the first one you would put out, anyway, is going to be the Scion Bane, because that's the one that went in there, okay? 
So that's why, you know, it's best to try and avoid that. Sometimes it's unavoidable getting Sion influence, so you don't want to lose. Um, you may have to spectate because you're not quite ready for things. Um, but yeah, that's what you're going to do. So first up is the AI. They're going to move out onto the map and they're going to do it in order. So the first thing they're going to do is onto number one, we're going to put the um, uh, the Warseer. Uh, let's just turn that a little bit. Oops. Oh dear. Turn that wrong. Uh, let's just lock that. They're going to put the Warseer. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to just put the tactic behind rather than underneath. Now, the tactician's got a particularly good move. Now, normally on tactics, what you can do is you can only play it on somebody that's next to you. Uh, uh, but of course, there's nobody next to them yet because the first one on the map. The tactician can play it on anybody on the map whatsoever. The next one we're going to bring out is going to be the um, uh, is going to be the archer. In fact, I'm going to move that just around again, basically, just to make sure we can see. Uh, and they've got, uh, if you look at their innates over here, um, the archer has an innate ability, and that is first strike, so it can attack the unit it is deployed. And as you can see, uh, the tactician has it can move the turn it is deployed, uh, and the tactics may be played on any unit in play. Now. As it's their first go, and there's no, and I'm not on the board yet, they can't move. Well, the tactician cannot move because there's no mark to move towards, and of course the archer cannot fire at anybody because there's nobody to fire against. So now it's my turn. I can choose to either fill all these up or just uh, deploy one at a time. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, let's see what we've got. The defender's innate ability is two. Uh, taunt, so uh, attack this defender. Okay, fine. So, let's have a look at this. Uh, I'm going to put my hero down here and my defender up there. Why am I doing that? Well, because I know this is going to start moving along, basically. Now, as um, uh, Ash, he's an archer, um, she has first strike, so I can attack on the turn it's deployed, but I only have a range of two, so that's no good. Um, and that's the end of my go. So now what's going to happen is... That monolith is going to move there. That monolith is going to move there. Oops. That monolith is going to move there. And that monolith is going to move there. And now it's back to the um, uh, back to the uh, to the AI. So uh, let, right, let's see who's going to move first. So ideally, I uh, kind of want to get round here when we know that the mark is going to be closest and weakest, basically. And locals get uh, units get one to their movement. So if you look at this. Got movement of three. They've got a movement of four, actually. So one, two, three, four. They can really get there. Uh, we've both got five. Uh, so closest and weakest, we're both about the same. So one, two, three, four. They are next to me. Oh, my God. Uh, and then this one is going to move the archer. They're going to move two, basically. So one, two. They're not within space to actually do anything as of yet. But look at what's happened here. Now. <laughs> the next thing they're going to do is they're going to play their tactic. And what are they going to do? Of course, their, uh, their tactic is going to go, if we just go here, uh, a tactic assignment, the weakest ally, uh, sorry, tactician, is the uh, enemy with the most basic attack die. So within range of two, there, they can, well, it's tactician, it can play anywhere. Most basic attack die, we've both got basic attack die. There we go. Uh, we've both got one basic attack die. So I think at that point I can then put that anywhere, and I think I'm actually going to put it onto my uh, onto my hero because I don't mind too much. And this says I can either move or attack on my turn, but not both. And I think if I can keep things around here, that's okay. All right. So that's their abilities done. Now they're going to attack me. So the first thing that's going to happen is that they are going to roll their red die. However, before that, remember that Virago has got a quick strike action. And what does quick strike say? It says, if, uh, when triggered with a basic attack, deal attacking unit one damage before the attack. So straight off, straight off, I'm going to knock um, um, the Warseer down to one attack. And that's pretty good. I'm okay with that. That's pretty good. But they are going to attack me now, and they're going to roll one red die. So if we look over here, uh, and I know from playing the game that a red die is all hits. There we go. So I have lost that, uh, lost a hit there, and that is down to four now. Okay, so that's there goes uh, gone. This arch over here has a range of two. He's moved his, his kind of uh, 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 one space. So is it two spaces? Yeah, two spaces. Oh, no, he can only move one. Uh, there we go. So he started there. He can only move to there. He can't actually go anywhere just yet. 
Um, so he's kind of he's kind of stuck over there. I'll have to get to him in a wee while. Right. So now it's over to me. And the first thing I can do is move. Now I can move this defender just one space if I wanted to. If I move there, I'm going to get pushed by the monolith in the next go because remember it says here. Uh, any units in the way get pushed to an occupy unoccupied hex of your choice, if possible. If the model cannot move, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, I could move and then use this to push me that way, which then gets me a little bit of uh, uh, potentially going around here. It depends on which order the model is move. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to move myself because I can't do anything. I've got no range here. I can't do anything. Um, uh, I can't, can't taunt because that's what the defender's got there. He's... Uh, enemies adjacent to his unit can only target this defender, so we'll do that. We will move to there. I'm going to keep Virago where she is. Remember, she's got the tactic, which says uh, can either move or attack on its turn, but not both. So let's keep Virago where she is. And what we're going to do is we are then going to do a strike against what's his face, the war seer here. Now, remember, quick strike ability, they knock me for one already. So we should do that. That takes me down to three, and I get to roll my dice. So what have I got? I've got a green dice. This is my opportunity to take this uh, to take this warseer out. So hopefully my green dice is going to play well for me. So let's see. No, of course it didn't, which is not good. That means my attack missed. The warseer lives to fight another day. Okay, <laughs> that's not good. And that's the issue with only having one dice. Uh, of course, if I'd got some ability to allow me to do that and got some prowess cards, I may have got something else there. So we are off to not a great start. We are down to three. Uh, we are going to kill them before they get the opportunity to strike, and that's okay, but at least you know it's not me down to three. Okay, so now it's the monolith time to move, so we'll move that there. Oops. We'll move that there, that there, and we know this monolith is going to move that way and it's going to shove me onto an adjacent hex. So let it shove me there and that goes there. And now it's back onto their turn. Okay, so let's think about this. He's really not going to move. He's exactly where he needs to be to strike me, basically, and I'm hamstrung just there. We know that uh, uh, this character can move one. It's not a local. Remember, this is the only local. It's the Amazon Arena. This is a neutral, neutral fighter, so they're just going to move to there. Because the way this is going is that, you know, I suppose they could go around there or around there. But at the moment, uh, the one they can get to easiest, let's see, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. OK, so we shall move them to there. Uh, I could move them around there, I suppose. Right. And now it's their attack. So they've got a range of two. They're still not within range of anybody. One, two, one, two, one, two. No. OK. So this uh, Warsier is going to attack. But remember, I've got quick strike. So I... I'm going to knock that down for zero with my quick strike ability, and that is the Warseer gone. There we go. We'll just flip that over. Uh, well, we'll put that there into their um, into their dead area, if you like. So that's the first one gone, and these guys cannot move at all, uh, cannot do anything at all now, basically. Uh, he's stuck where he is, and now we have the monolith. So now, back over to my turn. Do I want to move? Well, I can only move or attack. I'm going to be in range of this person next time. So maybe, um, maybe I am going to move just there, and I'm going to try to get my, maybe I'll leave that there, one, two, because he's then going to go for this. Yeah, so I'm going to stay exactly where I am for this guy. I can't attack anybody. Uh, I'm not within range there. If I get within range, it doesn't matter because I can only move or attack. So now the monoliths move again. One, two, three, four. Now back over to this guy, <clears throat> okay? So he's now always going to move towards the weakest, which is me here, but also the closest as well. So it's closest and then the weakest, and therefore I'm closest. One, two, one, uh, the archer's closest. So he's going to go, or the defender's closest, just there, okay? And we know he's going to roll a black and a yellow die. There's nothing else for him to do. His innate thing was, uh, as an archer, is um, uh, attack the turn it's deployed, wasn't there so we shall now roll a black and a yellow die so we get these here let's see how many damage they can do to my defender so here we go oh one damage so we take that down to four there we go nothing else for the defender um and that's their go complete now and now it's my go so i'm going to move just there block that off and I'm going to roll a black dice against this particular um, archer. So there we go. We should roll that 
And what we got? We got a hit. So we knocked that down to one. Okay. What's going to happen now is these are going to turn. Oops. There we go. Um, these are going to turn uh, and go the other way uh, and start their move the other way. So they're actually going to knock me uh, to an adjacent hex. And that's not too bad. So we'll move this one this way, that one that way, that one. Oh, dear me. Yeah. So it's going to knock me down there, move to there, and that's going back this way. So that's my go gone. He's within range. He's not going to move, basically, from there. Um, so what's going to happen is he's going to take his go with his black and yellow die and try and attack my defender again. So here we go. One, two, three, four. And it's another single hit. So my defender is now down to three. Okay. There's nothing else for him to do. He's within close. That's closest there. He's within range. And now it's me again. I'm going to keep her back here because she's safe back here. Let's move my defender up there and roll my one black die and see what happens. And it's a hit. And that is it. That is the archer defeated. And we have won that particular arena. So we'll bring these guys back. There we go. And we shall bring Virago back. Wow. Okay. So there you go. That was the first game. As you can see, the games in the early part of the game, uh, they don't necessarily take a lot of time. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, sorry, on this pad here, is because I'm doing something in my first week, I should have, there we go, just marked off a little, there we go, and that makes me know I've done week one in the act there, so that's okay. And I should have done that when I chose the event, and you do that every time, and that just marks you up, and of course... By that week there, by uh, week 12, we've got to be in a position where we are fighting the Primus. So there we go. We have defeated. Yeah, hey, fantastic, wonderful. What are the victory conditions? Well, for a sporting event, I can choose um, uh, anybody from the lineup or a... Um, uh, yeah, anybody from the lineup or a tactic from the supply. So who am I going to choose from the lineup? Well, I'd be a rather remiss if I didn't choose this kind of... Um, uh, this Warseer uh, from the lineup uh, to add into my army, and that will give me a little bit more to uh, kind of fight with there. And I haven't lost anybody yet. I can command up to five, so one, two, three. Let's take that into there, which is great. They're going to get two health. Two, that's a two. Uh, Prove this back to five, full health there. Uh, and we shall drop that back into there. And that is week one done. We have, let's put that tactic back because the tactics get cleared. We have completed week one on a sporting event. We did it as a spa and we defeated, um, uh, yeah, we defeated uh, the Amazonians in the pummeling that happened. Fantastic. Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, week two. Okay, so that was the first week done there. And as you can see, we're here. And I move my units back up here. In a sport event, they don't die. Even if they were defeated, they just get flipped back up and restored to full health. The only one that doesn't restore to full health is your hero. And as we know, Virago got a couple of hits there. So that took her health down from five to three. There are ways to recover that. And I think, actually, that may well be what we're going to do in this next turn. So I've got a number of weeks now. I've got 11 weeks left to get over here to try and find one of... Um, one of the Atlanteans, so I need to find, uh, I need to um, fight either Krakenlance or Stygiana. What I don't think I can do is I don't think I have enough weeks to get over to Sea Strider. If I was to walk over there, I could use these boat actions and do that. And that's what we'll probably do. So week two, what I'm going to do is go over here and it should be a sporting, uh, another sporting event. And here we go. We've got this here. It's a trial of numbers. So it's a King of the Hill event. And I would have to fight one local with a tactic and two, two of their warriors with a tactic and two neutral soldiers with a tactic. But I could then put my hero and four of my units out there and try and fight them as well for a King of the Hill. And I mentioned King of the Hill, kind of go up here, uh, you get a point for each uh, each time you get into one of these hexes. And therefore you will get, once you get six points, that's it. Uh, you won the game, but you cannot defeat their armies before you. However, Virago took a bit of a hit, didn't she? And she's down at uh, three health. So I think I'm going to do a spectate action. And what we do, spectate action does, well, first of all, is it doesn't cost me a week. And that's okay. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't cost me a week. So what is the disbenefit of doing a spectate action? Well, if you look down at the bottom there, you can see there is a scion influence strike. So when you spectate, one of the things that you've got to do is mark off on the scion influence strike. Um, an area on there. So let's just do that, that first one. Boom, there we go. And I say, when you get to this one here, 
then I will put a Bane chip win into the um, into the neutral bag, into the uh, soldier bag. So Scion, so the um, uh, the Scion influence is kind of important. Yes, you you need to use spectate sparingly and effectively, um, but uh, you, there is a disbenefit. And what is the benefits of spectating? Well, first of all, you discard the um, the sporting event you were going to do. Secondly, you get one of two options. One of the options is to, um, uh, I could recruit a neutral unit from the bag, basically. So I could take one of the neutral units out of here, flip it up and recruit it into my uh, into my team. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that, though. What I am actually going to do is take the other option you get on a spectate, and that is to heal my hero up to full health. And I think that's going to be particularly useful there. So there we go. We know she's five health. She's on three at the moment. And that's five. And that is that particular go done. I now get to travel again because it doesn't cost me a week. So uh, we go right back to the beginning and, uh, and we go over. So what I'm going to do now is move over into Vesuvius, I think, and start having a look at what is going to happen here. Oh, it's an opportunity that's going to take place in Vesuvius. So let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so we spectated that event, um, and we got Virago back up to full health, uh, and now we're going to move on to the next event. So, so here I am here, and I can move down here into an opportunity, which is still part of uh, the Amazon area, or maybe move over into Vesuvius, and I think that's potentially what I'm going to do. At some point, I actually want to get a lethal event, so I think I'm going to kind of go um, maybe this way and try and get to a lethal event. So we're going to move our chip over here onto the opportunity. So remember, one of the first things I do is, other than for spectating, you mark off the next week on there. So let's just do that, and we'll knock a decal, and we'll put that there. Uh, I would have put it next to it, but it's just how it's set. So we know we've got two on there anyway. Okay, so that's that. And now it's an opportunity event. And with an opportunity, what I do is I go, in, just to confirm it's an opportunity, if you look under there, you can see it's the green, it's an opportunity. We go up here and we take this card. And this, as soon as I deal four damage with a single attack by my hero, I can take a hero prowess card. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna put this kind of in maybe down this area down here on a second. And I know that is kind of an active uh, an active opportunity that maybe if I can deal four damage in my next go, then that will allow me to take out one of these, choose one of these hero prowess cards. But as you can see, we're already in Vesuvius, so at some point this map is going to change to whatever Vesuvius is. And you can see there's various maps in here, and all of them just look absolutely fantastic. And there we go, that's the Vesuvius map. So yes, at some point uh, we will move to Vesuvius, uh, or we'll have a fight in Vesuvius. It looks like on the very next go, and it's, like it's going to be a sporting event. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see how the Vesuvian map works. Let me just remove those monolith chips, because of course they are not for... Vesuvius. Right. Let's have a look now at week three. Okay, so here we are. So we've done the first two weeks and we've had a week spectating as well, which has moved up on the Scion track. So now we're going to move to week three. We're over here and it's going to move over here and it's going to be another sporting event. So we're getting close to a lethal event. And there we go. We'll move that to there. And I'm actually going to take that this week. Uh, because obviously I've taken one and I've spectated one as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark on the act track. Now, just remove the decals on this part here and replace them with some little beads because the, the uh, decals just weren't um, showing up right, basically, or going into the right place. So there we go. We've marked that week and we're going to take this particular um, uh, event here. And it's a sporting event. And as you can see at the top, it's a... King of the Hill, sorry, uh, Capture the Flag event. Mm. Okay, so what we have to do on Capture the Flag, we're going to start down here. Um, the Capture the Flag is going to be placed on the number one of their hex, basically, and we've got to go there, get that token, and bring it back to here to win the game. <laughs> and look at this. We have ourselves a little flag token, so we're going to put that on the number one. All we have to do is be on that same hex, and, uh, and we can pick it up and come back. So what else is on, on this as well? So let's have a look. So he's going to do a local and um, two units, and the final unit is going to have a, um, a tactic on it, and I can do the hero and three units, okay? And it says there, instead of a local unit, start the enemy lineup with a Vesuvian unit, if possible. We're on Vesuvius, so therefore it will be a Vesuvian unit anyway. Now, one thing I want to show you here, 
is on the um, capture the flag here. What does it say? Uh, only three gladiator challenges are permitted onto the arena at the same time. So if you look, even though I've got potentially five to put on there and I've got four hexes, uh, I can only put three on there at any one time in my deploy phase. So first thing we're going to do, as according to this, is we're going to pick out a local. And here's a Vesuvian local. And here we go. It is a volcanic brute, and he's a defender. So let's just get one of the red die and put that on there. As you know, this tracks his health. And that's on five there. And he's got um, an innate blasphemous there. Okay, let me just shuffle these. And then we're going to draw out another two. So we'll take this one first, uh, which is an archer, and then this one, which is a tactician. Okay, uh, so the archer has a health of two, and the tactician has a health of two. So that's one and two of those. So we'll bring those over. Here we go. Uh, uh, uh. So put two on there anyway, put that on there for two. And we know that the tactician has a, if we look here, so the third one out, uh, after, well, the second one after the local, uh, has a tactic. He's a tactician. Just go down to the innate skills, uh, and that's up here. And we can see that a tactician has a hamstring, so we'll find a hamstring one. There we go. And we know that because, of course, that came out of previous go. Remember, a tactician can deploy that to anybody anywhere on the map. Okay, and now I've got to decide who's coming out for mine. So King of the Hill, I kind of want to potentially pick off pick off uh, people. So I've got the archer. Maybe I bring kind of, I hold Virago back for a little bit and I, I put these guys up to start off with. So um, maybe I shall do my, um, yeah, uh, my Wars, uh, Warsia. Uh, definitely want a tactician. Uh, because they've got a good move on the tactician, but I might keep them back. Um, and I, you know what, I'm going to prep them all. I don't have to bring them all out, of course. So there we go. Because uh, I can do one plus three. So I've got to put one back. Mm, who, who am I going to put back? Let's put the tactician back. Yeah, we'll put the tactician back. So there we go. I've got my hero and my three guys there. So... First thing is going to be to deploy, um, there you go, and remember I've got to get to there. That's the number one, so the first one goes out onto number one, there we go. So he's going to be on top of that chip, doesn't matter when he moves, that chip will, won't move with him. And then we'll put you on number two, and you with your hamstring ability on number three. Okay, so they're being deployed first, and it really doesn't matter what's on there. So the archer can strike first, the tactician can move first uh, when they've been deployed, and also um, can deploy that tactic on anybody. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, defender is a taunt mechanism, but there's nobody else on the map, so there's no one for them to move towards. So, I remember the um, down here it says I can only have three on... Um, Three on the map at any one point. Um, so uh, let's do, who should we do? Who's going to be good to move up to there? Because they're going to move next and potentially get into my area. And they're going to move towards the closest and the weakest. So it doesn't matter where I put them, um, they're probably all going to get moved on. Um, let's put the quick strike there. I kind of want him to be there. Um, let's put a bit of a tank there. And then let's put this guy... Here. So this should drive, this uh, arch, this um, tactician as he comes down should be driven to go to him, if you move there, one, two, three, yep, because he's got taunt, then he's going to come down on two and he's going to go to there and he's going to have to attack him but we'll get in with a quick strike uh, and then this one is going to move one anyway um, and then he's going to be within range two so he's going to fire upon this guy. Just want to look at this skill here, uh, this uh, skill it's blasphemous. Let's go and check out what blasphemous is and what does blasphemous do? It says if an, uh, if an enemy elite is in the arena this unit gains plus one block to its basic attack, uh, oh sorry plus one black to its basic, basic attacks for the AI Whilst uh, while enemy elite is in arena, this unit adds a new top priority to its mark of opposing hero, a new top priority to its uh, target of opposing hero. So if my enemy elite, i.e. my hero, was on there, it would zoom towards that. But of course, I've held them back for the time being. So there we go. But I have three on the map at any one point. All right, so let's have a look at these next things. We got this, we got this, and we got this. And their innate abilities are for a uh, defender is taunt. Uh, for uh, for an attacker, it's retaliate. 
uh, and then for the uh, strategist it's initiative so I can move in the turn I deployed if I was the uh, yeah um, um, if I was the war seer so do I want to move uh, and kind of head you off at the pass maybe maybe um, yeah let's because oh, you're going to move to the closest no I'm going to stay exactly where I am okay so that's my go done oops Okay, now back over to their go. So, um, let's see. So you're going to, first of all, uh, as a tactician, you are going to move. Your mark is the closest and the weakest and it's down there. Okay. Uh, then you are going to move towards your closest and your weakest. Uh, so that's going to be down. Oops. Uh, that's going <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That changed up to five again. That's a two. Um, that's a two. That's a five. Um, that's a three. And that's a two, so that is a two. Okay, so you are on there. So move the flag back, and you're going to move one, two to there. Okay. I'm going to open a lock, lock this. And then finally, you are going to move as an archer, and you're going to move to within range, and you're going to be there. Then you're going to possibly play that on there as a tactician. It's closest and the weakest. Uh, Closest first is you, so you will play that, and that means that this archer, uh, this defender, he's now, um, yeah, he's hamstrung. He can move or attack, but not both. Right, okay, so let's have a look at what we got. The defender uh, and the tactician, he's got two, and he's got a red dice. He's going to roll towards me. Um, oops. Five. Okay, all back. Uh, so he's going to... Um, he's going to roll a red die towards the defender, and the defender's innate ability is... Uh, it's torn, so yeah, he's going to be attacked. So let's roll that red die and see what happens. Well, we know a red die is, is eight, so that's that taking you down from five to four. There we go. You're on two. Uh, you're on three. You're on five. You're on two. Okay. So there we go. So that's done that there. Then we move over to the gladiator, and he's a volcanic brute, and he's got blasphemous. He's going to roll these, but I've got quick strike first. So before the attack, I'm going to knock you down to four. Um, and then you're going to roll your green and your yellow die against me. So let's do a green and a yellow roll. There we go. We'll roll those. And that is just one hit, so that's going to take me down to one. Okay. Uh, and then here we have the uh, the archer, which is going to go into those here, closest and weakest. Okay. And what do we have? We have an attacker, and he's got retaliate. And what does retaliate do? Uh, when this unit is dealt a basic attack damage by an adjacent enemy and it's not defeated, deal one damage. That is no good because he's taking on an archer. So therefore, we're going to do a black and a yellow for the archer. Okay, one, two, three, oh, and that's one hit, so we'll knock that down to two. Okay, that's great. So we've started off and uh, and we've taken some hits there, but look at this, I can get up there. So what I can do is, as you, I can do one, two, three, and I'm already on that chip. However, I do only have one health. My aim is to try and get him to bring that down as much as possible. I've got my defender, and I could move up to there, because none of these have got combat lock at this stage. So I can move out of the way and try and get away from them. Um, yeah, that might be good. Um, okay, so let's maybe we both gang up and try and take this guy out. Uh, although he has, um, yeah, so quick strike was there. That should be on two because he's not taking anything back, has he? Um, okay, uh, maybe, 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 maybe. Um, Let's see, I've got a good chance of actually defeating this archer with these three dice over here. So we'll do two, one, two, and two there. We'll try and protect our guy. And this guy will move one in between there. So he can't attack because he's up there, but we've got the chip, which is good. So we are going to attack this guy here, um, the archer. And we can see if we can get rid of him with a black, a blue, and a yellow die. So it gets a little bit tricky with some of the dice. Black, a blue, and a yellow die. But let's, uh, let's just see. Well, three hits and we got one hit that is not good okay so that has gone from three to two which is not good but where the archer is obviously he's going to retaliate against him as well so now we've got this guy here and he's going to do a black die and who do we want to do well this guy is kind of dangerous isn't he but this guy is also a little bit dangerous because he's got a range of one let's see if we can take out um, 
uh, at least do some damage towards Lado over here, the tactician. Oh, I can't. He's moved or he's hamstrung, isn't he? I forgot about that. He's hamstrung, so he either moves or he, um, yeah, he, he can't do much of anything there, basically. There we go. He's hamstrung, so he's moved and he's blocked, basically. That's all he's done. So where was he? He was down there. No, we're just going to keep him there. We're not going to move him, and we're going to do our black damage there. So he won't move. He'll do that instead. And it is a black damage, so we take that down to one. There we go. There we go. So remember, he's hamstrung. He can't do anything. Right, now it's over to these guys. So we've already got a chip. This is good. I can't bring her Virago out yet because there's still my, three of my guys on the board. But let's see what happens now. So, um... What's going to happen? He's going to stay there because it's closest and weakest. He's going to stay there because it's closest and then weakest. And he's going to stay there because it's closest and weakest, basically. And if we look at, um, look here, it's, oh, hold on a second, all enemy units. Mm. Closest gladiator, preferring the highest elevation possible. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. There you go. Closest and weakest, that's what it is. Um, okay. Let's think about this. So closest and weakest, closest and weakest. That's going to stay there. So this guy is going to roll one against this guy, basically. Uh, so he's going to roll one red, and that's okay. Uh, that will always be a hit. There we go. And we'll take that down to three. I'm still okay with that. And these guys, oh my god. So he's going to roll a yellow and a uh, green and a yellow and a black. So we may as well roll all these together and see how many... How many hits happen here? Although we do get retaliate, don't we? So if we survive, I believe, uh, when this unit is dealt with basic attack by an adjacent enemy, it's not defeated, deal one damage back to that enemy. So we're going to have to do these separately. I can choose the order. Uh, let's do the archer first, which is yellow and black. So there we go. That's one hit for me. But I knock that back as well, so that's one hit there. And then we've got the yellow and green here for... Um, uh, for the Volcanic Brute, uh, let's just see, please miss, uh, it's a hit, unfortunately, Hims is dead, this is a sporting event, so he goes back over there, and flip down, it means I do get to, do, I don't lose him completely, he does come up next go, however, we now have this guy here, which is, which is good, basically, so they've both done their attacks, and we now have this guy here, so I want to potentially stay out of the way of that archer, I can destroy this guy next go, and all I need to do is get back to this hex, so what we will do is we will move one, two, three, there we go, and we have got back to our hex, and that is it, so by some clever positional play, as you saw, I only lost one of my units, and also these guys weren't able to damage me that much as well. Uh, by keeping these guys engaged, closest and weakest, closest, weakest, etc., positional play allowed me to go from there, and one, two, three, back here. And you can see my movement is three. There we go. We have won King, uh, sorry, the uh, Capture the Flag game, which is fantastic. So Virago didn't even come out. My units go back. So let's put these back and give them back up full health one second so there we got a two health there there we got a five health and there we have hold on a second oh yeah he's not one of mine there we go and these are the units that are going to go back over here so although we didn't defeat any of their units it does not matter okay so one two three units back over there let's just do some tidying bring those, those down here there we go which is excellent. Uh, that's my defeated unit. What happens there is he comes back to full health anyway. So we take three on that. So we still have four. And if we look over here, what I get is as a... I'll put that tactic chip back as well and put the flag back. And what we get for winning a sporting event is I can choose from the enemy lineup or I can get a tactic from the supply. Of course, I'm going to choose from the enemy lineup. And I like the look of this guy, so we'll take this guy. Now, if we look here, this now means I am at my full complement. I've got the hero and five warriors under her. But that's okay. This is good. This kind of puts me in a good stead for moving forward a little bit uh, as the game progresses now. So that's really, really good. Still have this tactic to play as well. So... That was week three done. That wasn't too bad at all, basically. We're now getting closer to doing that uh, that event, uh, the, the lethal event. In fact, what we're going to do now 
is we're possibly going to move on to the lethal event, and that will wrap up the gameplay that I've got to show you so far for Hoplomachus Victorum. Okay, so that was week three. And actually, what we're going to do is I'm just going to potentially use Spectate for its non-optimal option just to skip along so we can show you a new map, which is the new Argonauts map. So what we'll do is we're now going to move on to here and we're going to Spectate. Now, for Spectating, as I say, I can move um, Virago up to a full health. She's already got that. Or I can recruit out of the bag. So let's have a look at recruiting out of the bag, what we got here. This gives us a uh, an archer. Now, do I have any archers? I've got Defender a warseer, an attacker, and a tactician. So maybe I want an, ar uh, an archer, so because I can only have five, I have to discard one of these back to the bag, so that can go back in there. So we'll have that archer instead of that tactician, and the archer's got a, a strength of two, there we go. So that's what we've done on spectating there. And what we can do is, uh, remember I've got to put a scion, uh, mark on the scion track here, so that's one, uh, there we go. Uh, 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 and that is gonna go, one sec, on there, oh, on there, and one there, and I'll use the beads. I will use the beads, it's just easier for me to do that. There we go, so it's one and two. So remember, I once I get to three, I have to put a Bane chip in somewhere. So that was that week, didn't mark a week off on there because I'm spectating, so we'll move forward and we will spectate again. Um, so I can, again, shuffle the bag, potentially, and I say this is non-optimal, it's just so I can get somewhere. I don't want to do another defender. I've got a defender, not, not replacing anybody. I've got one of everything there, so that's okay. However, however, because I've spectated again... Uh, uh, sorry, I have to discard those cards, don't I? So that was a, a lethal and a opportunity. So that would be that, and that would be like that. Uh, because I've spectated again, I have to put that on the Scion track. And there we go. I am, if you can see, I'm covering up the first... Bane action there, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is take the top Bane chip and you add it to this bag. And what is this top Bane chip? It's always going to be the Scion chip. And look at this when it comes out. Add an unused hero to the bag. So one of these guys, if I pull when I pull that chip out, is going to go in that bag, and that makes it kind of you know, more difficult potentially. So we'll give that a really good shuffle. All right. So I say a little bit non-optimal play there, but I just wanted to show you where we were, where things. Um, uh, show you a battle on a new map. So here we go. We now have moving on to this lethal event. We're in the new Argonauts area. So let me just find that. There we go. And uh, and yeah, and here we go. So this is the new new Argonauts, and we're going to do a lethal one here. We're not going to spectate. We're just going to jump straight into this. I think so. This says, native child, if in or adjacent to your hero's area, add a green die to their attack, and it's a local with a tactic plus one of their. Uh, plus one of the neutrals, plus my hero, and then two there, which is really good. Now, look at this new Argonaut map. You've got some weapons racks there. So let's go on to this here. Gladiators are deployed in teams of two, if possible, and must remain adjacent at all times until one is defeated. Uh, and we can only have one team in play at any one time, so you can have two maximum two gladiators on either side. When a unit becomes unshackled, if they have allies remaining in their lineup, you return them back to the hex and shackle them to the next available unit. That's not quite going to work here for the, uh, for, the for them. It may work for us. Armed. When a unit moves into a weapons rack, that unit immediately places any die on that hex onto their chip. That die is added to their next basic attack and then discarded. So that's really good. So you can see you can pick either two green dies or a yellow die depending on where you are. Uh, if Decimus comes out, that's his mark, all other ones is closest and weakest, and then open arena hex with a weapon remaining, and the target is the weakest gladiator. So let's put green die in here, so we'll put one there, and that's in the weapon rack. And we'll put another one in there, and then we'll put the yellow die in there. Oh, oh that's good. Okay, so the battle is set, the game is set up. Let's have a look at what we got. So over here are the attacking units, and we have a Secutor and a Defender, so two Defenders coming in from there. And of course the Secutor has got the stun, um, the stun tactic, which they will use on any adjacent units as and when they get next to them. Uh, over here, uh, obviously I can use kind of my hero and two gladiators, so let's bring our hero down. I'm going to be using an archer uh, and a volcanic brute, and I'm also going to bring this bolster health tactic out with the archer. Bear in mind, you can only use it on um, allies that are adjacent to them, and you can only use tactics on uh, uh, units that are adjacent to you, unless you're a tactician, you can use them anywhere on the map. This is not too problem problematic on this map, because skip over here, 
And what we got is that this is a shackled one, so your units are shackled together. They're deployed in teams of two and must remain adjacent at all times until one is defeated. Each player may only have one, play, one team in play at any time. If you become unshackled, you go back to your starting X and the new one comes on board, but they're dazed, that means they can't move. Uh, you're armed, so when you go to these weapon racks, then you can use that dice that's in that weapon rack. Um, and bear in mind, weapons advantage, local units have innate perfect strike. What is innate perfect strike? If you look on here, perfect strike says if it rolls all hits, double the damage dealt by that attack. Which may not be problematic until you have a look at the fact that this means that if they are in or adjacent to your hero's area, you add a green to their attack as well. So my aim is going to be to try and stop them getting to any of these dice, basically, because um, they've got perfect strike. Well, certainly the um, uh, the secretor has got perfect strike. Not this guy, because he's not local. secretor has got perfect strike. So I want to try and reduce the amount of dice they're going to use. It looks like... Got to get fairly close unless the archer kicks in, and therefore they're going to have an extra green die when they attack. So what we do first of all is we'll move that out there, and we'll put stun on there, uh, just so you can see where it is. That's on one, that's on two, and no matter what their innate abilities are, there's nobody else on the map, they cannot move as of yet. Next thing we'll do is we'll take the archer out, do him here, and then we'll do that. Now my archer's innate ability is that they can strike on their first go, but he's ranges two, so he can't do anything. That's okay. Next here, we've got the uh, Defender and the Secutor both moving one. So we'll move them there and there because they're going to move to the closest. Look down here. The closest, weak, closest, then the weakest Gladiator, then the Open Arena Hex with the remaining weapon. Well, there we go. Move down here and you get all that. So remember, we've got to stay shackled together, so we've got to stay adjacent at all times. Basically, I've got a move of two, you've got a move of one. He's got absorb, which means he can no, can't take any more than one hit or one damage on each uh, from each basic attack. So what we'll do is we'll move a two, move you there, and we'll move you onto there. So he's moved his full range of two. We've got an extra yellow die. Now. Both defenders, so it doesn't matter who I try to hit, I'm adjacent to them. Um, but this archer has got to try and hit this guy here. And that's okay. Um, so yeah, so let's roll all our dice against this guy here. Now let's just check these abilities. He's not managed to attack anybody yet, that's okay. Uh, and they have perfect strike, but they don't because they're not a local unit. So I've got this extra die, extra yellow die from the weapon rack. I've got another yellow die from my die here. A green die from my guy here, another yellow die, and a black die. And what we're looking for is, of course, he's on a health of five. Let's see if we can knock this guy down, basically. One, two, come on. Two. <laughs> okay, not the best hit, but he's there. It's a start at the very least, and it stopped them getting this weapon right here. Right, now back over to their turn. There's not a great deal more we can do. Can't play that tactic just yet. I don't want to. Very first thing they're going to do would be to move, but they're closer and we can, uh, closest to us anyway. So he's going to play his stun and he's going to play it on my uh, volcanic brute. What that means is my volcanic brute cannot move at all, basically. That's it. Uh, and because he's got a defender, that means they're both adjacent to him. They're both going to attack him. So let's do this one at a time. First of all, he's got a green dice there because, of course, he gets a green dice. Secondly, if we remember on this... If it's in or adjacent to your hero's area, add a green dice to their attack. So that's two green dice that he gets. Right. Thirdly, remember he's got perfect strike. Yeah. So if he rolls two hits, that means he knocks him for four hits. Let's look at that. Perfect strike. If this unit rolls all hits, double the damage dealt by that attack. So we do not want this as two hits. Let's see what happens. Oh, thank God for that. So that is only one hit. So that knocks him down to four. And then here... For this guy, he's got a black die and a green die because of this here. So he's adjacent to the hero's area. Uh, and he doesn't get perfect strikes, so it's whatever comes up on this. And that is two hits. Wow. Okay, so that's knocked him down to two. And he's stunned, remember. Can't do anything until the end of his next go. So now it's over to me. And I should move, but obviously I don't want to move because of where I am. I am going to play this tactic, and I can add two back to his health. So that's four gone there. That means that tactic can go in there. And this archer is going to attack this guy here with his black and his yellow die. Okay. So let's see. We're hoping for two perfect hits here. 
Oh, that's good. That's knocked him down to one there. That's okay. And now uh, his go's gone. His stun has gone. So that's fine. That's the end of his go. It's back to these guys. Exactly the same as before. He's going to roll two green die against my gladiator, my um, uh, volcanic brutes. So let's see what happens. Oh, so he's killed him. Remember, he's got two damage. He's got perfect strike because he's a local unit. So um, there we go. Local units have innate perfect strike. He's a, uh, a new organ Argonautian. So he's got perfect strike. He has just destroyed my gladiator. So my gladiator is now gone and out of my game. What that means is he comes over here, flips over. This archer goes back to here. And... This guy, uh, Virago, comes out, but she's dazed. It means she can't move, so only the archer can move. He can't attack because they didn't move, and he doesn't have any range on there, so that's okay. So what we kind of want to make them do now is kind of come down here a little bit and maybe move out there. So we can't move here, but my archer can move, and that puts them just there. Okay, so we're kind of protecting Virago a little bit. Uh, Virago should be on five, sorry, because we healed her health. And what we're going to do now is we are going to attack this guy here, which means then we've just got um, the Secutor to worry about. Uh, and Virago's got Quick Strike, so I'm not too worried about that at all. So all I need to do for my black and my yellow is just roll one single hit. There we go, and he is gone. So that's that unit gone. Excellent. Uh, actually, Virago should have moved to there to be closer to where I am. So of course, this unit couldn't move. Well, it couldn't move, actually. Let's see. Oh, no, it was me moving, wasn't it? Yeah. So they couldn't move. That's right. Yeah. So now it's Virag. Now it's um, the Secutor's turn. Okay. So he's going to come down here. Bear in mind, he's in my area. So or adjacent to my area. That means he gets that green die plus, plus another green die because he's adjacent to my area. And remember what happens if he rolls two. Well, I'm definitely dead. It doubles the damage there. So let's see. It's one, that's not it, so we knock me down to one. And now we've gone to my round, and guess what? Virago is, <laughs> yeah, she's okay. She's uh, she's pretty good there, so she is now ready to uh, to attack. So we're going to move, and what can she move? She can move one. We're going to move her there, and she's got a special ability, which is heave. And what does heave do? Heave allows me to... Uh, roll my strongest die against an enemy within three hexes. Well, she's only got one die. She's got a green attack. So without actually hitting it, without being next to him, I can roll a green die and see if we can hit him. No, it's a miss, but that's okay. My archer's going to have a go now. Bear in mind, he's got absorb on there. So if he... Yeah, that's a blank there. That is not a great move. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so now it's his go. Uh weakest he's there already he's going to roll two green die against me that's one so that is my archer gone so all i saddles both my units and all i've got left now is virago so virago is going to move and she's going to move into here and of course that gives her that on her next basic attack i believe one second um ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah uh, their next basic attack and then is discarded well I'm not going to do a basic attack. I'm going to roll my green die against you because I've got a special ability. And let's do that instead, which is my heave, which allows me to roll from three spaces away. And there we go. That knocks you down to three. So now he's going to come out back at me, basically. So he's going to come there towards me. And uh, bear in mind, he's going to have two green die to roll. However, I've got quick strike. What does quick strike do? It allows me to... Uh, deliver one act, uh, one one damage. So there we go. We should deliver one damage and take him down to two. He's going to roll two green die against me. So let's hope not for doubles here. Oh my god! All right, so that's knocked me down to three. I've got uh, it's my attack now, which means I'm still going to win this, but I'm going to be severely damaged. I've got this as a basic attack because I'm in the weapons right. Plus my green die. As long as I can get a hit here, I'm okay. There we go, we got a hit, knocked him down to one. Wouldn't matter if that's two, basically. It's now his turn to attack me. However, I've got quick strikes, so and before that happens, he is dead. Phew! Okay, and that is how that has played out. That was kind of pretty bloody scary. Um, yeah, that was pretty bloody scary. So what happens now then? Well, Virago goes back with her kind of her damage and that stays there. She didn't die, but she's down from five to three. Remember, she's got a maximum of five hit points there. 
I did lose two units, however. So what I do with those two units I lost is they go back into the enemy draw bag. And as you can see, that's starting to build up with enemies now. Um, so if we go over here, we can see at this particular section here, which I'll pull up now, it says I then get to either increase the amount of uh, units I can control or increase my die. Uh, so go to the next level of die or add another die. And that's what I'm going to do. Because Virago's only got a green die so far. So what I will do is I take the decal, select that, blah, 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 and I will put that just there. And that means now instead of just a green die, uh, Virago has now got a green and a yellow die as well. So that's, that's okay there. However, she's lost there. I've lost those units. Those units go back into that bag. And this, this bag, which started out as having nine enemy units, has now got... Uh, sorry, it's having five enemy units, now has nine chips in there. One of them is a Bane chip, uh, which is uh, which, which is not great, of course. Yeah, and uh, uh, and yeah, and we'll see what that brings out for us in future rounds. But that's it. I think, guys, that's uh, as much as I want to show you right now on uh, Hoplomachus Victorum. As you can see, I am kind of three, four weeks into uh, into my... Um, uh, into my Act 1 campaign, things start to ramp up significantly. So if we go down here, you can see that uh, what happens here. Look at the bottom. In Act 1, everything is written on the card. When I get to the Primus, they've got 6 health. They're going to pull out 3 locals, push themselves with a tactic, and I can use my hero and 3 of my uh, crew to go with me. However, I've just depleted 2 of my crew. In Act 2, it adds another... Uh, another, uh, another enemy to the back of the lineup, and Act Three adds another enemy plus a tactic. As you can see, the health is increasing. And Act Four adds two two enemies, one with a tactic to the end of the lineup plus the scion as well. So you can see things start to really ramp up and building up and kind of upgrading your um, uh, your hero and and your units and the dice that you can roll throughout the game is just absolutely key to success in this. I'm looking forward to kind of playing through the rest of this campaign and seeing how far I can get. Hopefully, I won't get defeated and potentially need to get. Uh, Virago healed at some point. So thank you very much for joining me on this tabletop simulator playthrough of Hoplomachus Victorum from Chip Theory Games. Apologies if I've got any minor rules wrong. I'm sure I, I may well have done it at, at the odd place. The rules are still in development, of course. Um, this is an absolute blast. It comes to Kickstarter, obviously, on the 11th of May. Make sure that you check out a few of the videos from Michael Kelly, from Liz Davidson, from Ricky Royal, from Paul Grogan, and go and back the Kickstarter because it's a pure solo experience. You're not going to regret this.